let me start by thanking, um, again, the sponsors of this conference uh, for which this is the keynote address. Um, again, our co-sponsors our co and, and the presenters of this conference, the Ontario Agency for Health Protection and Promotion and the Ontario College of Art and Design, um, and also people who have directly sponsored us, uh, Canon Design, co-hosts uh, Evan Me, Integrated Design, and Stantec. And we also have sponsors in kind, Entire Imaging, for printing, uh, they printed all the materials for this, and Herman Miller, who have, um, have provided an Aeron chair. Uh, when, when, is, when, is the, uh, when is the drawing? I don't even know. Okay, tomorrow, okay. Okay, Philippe Rome uh, is an architect currently uh, practicing and uh, working in Paris, France, and Lausanne, Switzerland. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to go through a, a few, just a few of his many accomplishments. Uh, and then, uh, in 2002, Philippe was chosen to represent Switzerland at the Eighth Architecture Biennale in, in Venice, and is one of the 20 Manifesto architects of Aaron Besky's 2008 ar architectural uh, Venice Biennale. He was a nominee in 2009 for the, uh, for the Ordos Prize in China and was in 2008 in the top 10 ranking for the International Chemikov Prize in Moscow. Ours is his second solo exhibition in Canada, the first being at the Canadian Centre for Architecture in Montreal just a few years ago. Um, he has also participated in a number of important group exhibitions uh, around the world. Archilab in 2000, one at San Francisco MoMA in 2001, CCA uh, Kitty uh, in 2004, the Frac Center, uh, Orleans, the Center Pompidou, uh, uh, the Beau Borg in 2003 to 2006. And in 2007, Manifesta 7 in, two, in 2008, and at Louisiana Museum in Denmark, which uh, had the show um, um, uh, that we're, we're exhibiting here previous to us. He's also taught widely. Um, he was headmaster of the Diploma Unit 13 of the uh, Architectural, Architectural Association in London from 2005 to 2008, a visiting professor at the Men uh, Mendricio Academy of Architecture in Switzerland in 2004 and 2005, and at the ATH in Lausanne from 2006 to 2007. He is currently guest professor at the Royal School of Architecture in Copenhagen, so that's a lot of traveling. Um, uh, and, and on top of that, he's currently worked on several uh, private and public projects in France, Poland, England, Italy, and Germany, so I think we have to get him to do something in North America as well. Um, and my sense is that Mr. Rahm is a very good spokesman for the theoretical precepts that underlie his work, so I'm only going to say a few things uh, to frame his talk tonight. Um, uh, mostly what I want to say is, is that Philippe Rahm is working in what I think uh, is a very critical, but just a few years ago, almost unrecognized tradition. And I would say there is a straight, straight line, sometimes interrupted, but nevertheless a line between uh, Adolf Loos's statement 100 years ago that indoor plumbing and the light bulb had changed architecture and done more to create the metropolis than any of the aesthetics innovations of the then emerging avant-garde. Um, and of course, there are many t times when that would have not uh, been thought to be true, but this is an idea that, that uh, actually Rainer Banham build a whole field of scholarship and a career uh, pursuing um, uh, 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 very early on and starting in the 1950s and certainly uh, after, after publishing Architecture of the Well-Tempered Environment, this question of the architect's work and the way in which the very circumstances of making buildings had been changed by the technology to not technologies of light and temperature and, uh, and, and um, the uh, tempering of, uh, of, the, uh, of, uh, of the environment uh, was very interesting because, of course, there had been people like Buckminster Fuller who had advocated for a very radical, a very radical, almost, um, you know, biosphere-like uh, approach to building the environment. And what was amazing about, in a way, uh, Adolf Loos's provocation in the early part of the 20th century um, that these innovations had changed architecture more and his almost kind of... Um, preemptive strike against the kind of highly aestheticized functional approach against architecture. And then Rainer Banham's uh, reapproachment of this idea in the 60s and 70s is that, of course, there were 
there were innovations in history and throughout the history of architecture that architects needed to learn from in terms of uh, the way in which architecture situated itself, its materials, its densities, its lightness in relation to particular kinds of climates and places. And this is very much uh, in the consciousness during that period. I spoke earlier today about uh, an a kind of revolution and critique that happened in the 1960s and 70s, um, a pushback against a highly instrumentalized understanding of architecture as being, being uh, a kind of functionalist and, and a product of systems and a, re a return to everything from, um, from typology to vernacular forms. Um, this all preceding the, the, even the previous few generations. Um, so, of course, during this period and, the look, and trying to sort out all these ideas, we came to understand, for example, that architects such as Mies van der Rohe were never really functionalists at all, that he had already evacuated many of his buildings of function and opened them up to certain kinds of experiences, but not really climate. Um, so uh, when, when uh, Mr. Rahm argues for a kind of post-functionalist architecture, I think he's speaking very differently than not only the kind of, uh, about a different kind of architecture than not even we understood, understand from someone like Mies van der Rohe, although he was able to achieve that in, in, in a visual sense, but certainly very different from the, um, the kind of more nihilistic architecture uh, of Peter Eisenman, who also used this term post-functionalism and wrote a very famous essay about it. Um, when, when Mr. Ram talks about, uh, borrows Robe Grier's formulation and talks about architecture without qualities, he's really uh, asking for, for or, or challenging us to think about an architecture that is open to qualities that it doesn't entirely control. Um, and so he's not talking about a kind of denatured, uh, negational architecture of the kind that came of this generation who wanted to critique functionalism, but a new understanding of the larger array of functions that, uh, that, that we come to understand by engaging uh, another uh, word that was used by George Verde earlier, the real, however we, we construe that, uh, whether it's the real of, of emerging technologies or the real of heat or the real of smell. So with that, I'm going to turn the stage over to Mr. Rahm and thank him for traveling so far to come and speak to us. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the introduction and uh, the invitation uh, here in Toronto. Um, the lecture, I focus the lecture on the, on the topic of the, of the day, of the symposium today and tomorrow of, about Earth. So it's not my, uh, my, my wall, uh, everything in my work, it's just a focus on the, on the one part. And uh, so it's uh, also a new lecture for me. So, uh, I, uh, it's an experience also for me to, to show all these different projects. I select uh, some project in since nine uh, since um, ninety nine um, um, and to, to, uh, to today, and so um, um, so you, you, I, I hope you will understand a little my my position uh, uh, about an architecture between uh, physiology and meteorology. Uh, the, the, there is these two books. Maybe this book uh, it, it was published in 2002 for the Biennale in, in Venice, uh, called Physiological Architecture. And um, at this moment, it was uh, really important f for me to to try to. It, it was a period where the idea of um, bi bi biology and uh, genetic came into the, the 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 field of the society with, with the idea of the clone and uh, and all this new uh, new pro problem and new technique and. Um, and as an architect, you, you, you also understand that the space is no more the same, that also the mobile phone co came, and so the, you understand that the, the space is not empty. There is a lot of wavelengths, of lot, a lot of electromagnetic wavelengths in the space, and so there is not only a visible geography, a visible space, but there, there is also an invisible space created with all these um, 
with this inv invisible uh, 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 radiation. And uh, in the same ID uh, with genetic, uh, the, the genetic ID says that the, what happened with the form, what you see, it's not really come not from the outside, but really uh, very often it comes from the inside, from some uh, uh, genetic uh, data that change the shape uh, of the body or change the thing. So, so uh, for me, this, this element uh, uh, change the field of architecture and uh, I will present some different projects where you will see how, how I try to integrate these new, new, new things into, into the work of, uh, of architecture. And uh, the mo uh, most uh, uh, recent book, it is this um, uh, Meteorological Architecture. It's only a book in French now. It's, it was published uh, last year. And so uh, from, the, from this microscopic as approach, I try to go in a more uh, large uh, approach to this meteorological approach. So, so it's, uh, uh, my work is between, uh, and, and the architecture, I think it's between this uh, reception, this uh, microscopic reception of the skin, of the, of, the, um, of the body, of the biology of the body, and the macroscopic uh, phenomena of the atmosphere, of the climatic uh, um, element and uh, and the weather and all this uh, uh, this space where we are uh, inside and we we live in this uh, space. So arch architecture is it is this relation, this uh, t tension between this uh, these two uh, scales. Uh, <clears throat> I will begin with this. Uh, this it, it was an installation I was invited at the School of Architecture of the Royal Danish uh, Academy of Fine Art, uh, and it was the exhibition of the school during the COP15 uh, symposium about uh, climate uh, last uh, in December, uh, last December, and. Uh, and so it was a very particular approach about the climate because I, I try to, uh, uh, to think about the climate related to architecture, not, uh, not really as a, a how to, 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 to save the, the climate or to, to preserve the, the, um, the problem of the global warming, but, but to, go, uh, to go in a the, in the kind of uh, expo exploration of uh, the relation between the climate and the body and why, uh, why we need architecture and why architecture is related to the climate. And here, if you see this, this uh, first image, it looks very abstract, but in fact, it's a kind of recomposition of the world, uh, but with, uh, with a kind of uh, separation of the different elements of the atmosphere that are rebuilt in, in an artificial way. And the name of the project, it is this uh, new Old Duvet Gorges. And the, and the main idea of this project is uh, that why, why architecture exists? It is uh, because, um, because we need, uh, the, 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 the essential reason of architecture, why we need architecture, it is because it's too cold outside and we need to create a kind of warm space or it's too dark outside and we need to create a light space, or it's too warm and we, create, we need to create a cold space. So this is a real reason of architecture. And, um, and this reason uh, of architecture could be understood uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a metaphor. If you think about the, the paradise of Adam and Eve, uh, they are naked, nude, and uh, they don't need architecture because it's uh, the outside temperature. It's maybe between uh, 24 degrees Celsius and 20, uh, 22 degrees Celsius and 26 degrees Celsius. So you don't need clothes, you don't need a uh, house, and you don't. Need, there is no rain, no snow, and uh, so you could live uh, like this. And when they they go out from the paradise, so the rain comes, and so they need to, to, to create some protected space where they could rebuild a kind of small paradise inside the house. And, and for example, here we are in a kind of small paradise. We could be naked here in this room, and there is a snow outside, and it's very cold outside. So it's always this idea. <laughs> and, and, uh, and the name also, uh, this. Uh, 
all the way gorgeous. It is uh, we, this idea that humanity came from Africa, and uh, this is a, a sub-Saharan area in Africa, and we say that the, the, the mankind uh, cradle is, is from there. And it's maybe also uh, still inside our body. It uh, it's means that um, uh, we know that you will show, you, you will see after. We know that there is some circadian cycle, biological cycle in the body, bio, uh, biological rhythm, and this rhythm is. Uh, could be adapted to this Africa position, uh, uh, the cycle of day and night, and uh, it's why the body could be a little um, disor disoriented when it go more to the north or more to the south, and when it, it go more to the cold area or the warm area, and and uh, and so maybe architecture. It's a the idea to rebuild the paradise, but it is also maybe the idea to rebuild this part, uh, this area in Africa uh, where the, uh, humanity came. And uh, so here in this uh, very abstract space, uh, I try to re reintroduce, to decompose uh, the, um, the different elements of architecture and to rebuild them, but not as a, as a um, as a global wall uh, space, but as small things like a decomposition, like a disintegration of elements of architecture that are uh, uh, spread in the space like small things. And, uh, and here, this area, it's, it's a kind of day. This area, it's a kind of cold place or more cold place, and this area, uh, no, this area was a warm place, and this area was a more cold place. And uh, so, uh, so it's a it's a, it's a kind of architecture, but a disintegrate architecture. So the main, the first, uh, uh, um, the first uh, element, it is the creation of the light, and. Uh, and we know that maybe if we are adapted to the Africa latitude, uh, it's also related with um, ultraviolet and the synthesis of the, of the uh, uh, vitamin D in the body. And we need to have some uh, ray on the body, on the skin, to have this uh, synthesis of the vitamin D. And uh, we need a certain quantity of light on the, on the skin. And when you go in the north, part of the... Of the of the, of the earth, in, in the, like the Inuit people, like, like uh, on the, you, you, the, the, the night become too long, it's become six months uh, uh, night and six months day, and so it creates some disease uh, in the body, but this disease is, is, uh, is um, absorbed by the, eat, by the fact that you eat fish, and you eat some, uh, you, uh, and the heat contain directly vitamin D, and so it's uh, the fish become like a like a microscopic sun or like a micro like a uh, edible uh, um, sun, edible space. So it's create an interesting uh, um, uh, as, aspect that uh, architecture of uh, light could be something outside the body, it could be the light from the sun or from the electrical light, but it's, it could be also the fish that you eat. And, uh, and so the, there is a, uh, so architecture is not only outside, it's also related with, uh, with this. And so the two, this is the two uh, uh, possibility to have this vitamin D, D because if you don't have this vitamin D, uh, you, it creates some disease, uh, rachitis, and some problem for the health. And so it's why you need to go outside uh, every day to to get this ultraviolet on the skin. And it's why also uh, when the when the people from Europe go to the north part of the of the world, they don't they, they were uh, uh, sick. And they don't understand before why the Inuit were, were not sick, and it, it, it is why, because they, they eat some some fish, and so they. they. And so this uh, this element, these two elements of ultraviolet of light, are integrated with this element. It was a ultraviolet light, and also this uh, big table of fish with David uh, Gisson eat some fish there, 
And so it's two solutions of light, how to bring light in the space, and so two, uh, the light could be, yes, going from outside, or you could eat the light directly. The other, the other phenomena, it is uh, the question of, uh, because we, uh, when, uh, when we go out, outside, we begin to be cold, and so the, 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 there is a different strategy. Uh, Rainer Banham spoke about different strategies. He said if it is cold, you could take the wood and build uh, a small house, or you could burn the wood directly and you have the fire directly on the body. And, and so it's two ways to, to, um, to warm yourself when it's cold outside. Uh, but the first uh, way, the third way, it's not this one, it's before architecture. It is the body, it's called thermogenesis. It's uh, the fact that the body, when it's cold, you begin to, f to freeze, to move, the, to create your, um, your, your own energy by moving the muscle of the body. And also you begin to burn the food, yeah, the, the, the reason of the food, because we need to keep 37 uh, degrees Celsius inside the body, because uh, humanity is like this, and uh, so we need the, the why we 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 eat. It is because we need to to create uh, eat directly in the body, and when it's become cold, we burn more uh, protein, and so it's a, it's the first. Uh, way to, it's, maybe it's the first way of architecture, to, of built architecture, it is to, to burn uh, food inside the body. And uh, so this, is, this was this element, yeah, with a lot of uh, meat inside, and we could, we could, uh, we don't have a radiator, we just have this uh, boiling meat here. And uh, another element, it is uh, uh, if, we are, if we are cold also, you know, uh, you, you, we feel the coldness uh, from outside, from the environment, for, uh, because uh, we have inside the skin, we have some neuronal sensor, it's, and uh, so everywhere in the mouth and in the, on the skin of the body. And, uh, and uh, when, uh, if it is, for example, very warm, if it is 40 degrees Celsius outside, the, it touches the skin, and the, the, this sensation takes one channel, a neurologic channel, ion channel, that go in the brain, and uh, related to the temperature, when you, if you uh, put your, your hand in the cold uh, water, you, you understand that it is cold, because it takes one ionic channel, and if it, you go, you have your hand in the warm water, it takes another channel, and uh, the warm channel, uh, upper than 40 degrees Celsius, it is a TRPV1 channel. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, um, and the cold channel, it is a TRPM8 uh, channel. And something it, it is interesting this is that uh, this channel could be activated by the outdoor temperature, but it could be activated also by some chemical substance like uh, chili, red hot chili paper, for example. Why, when you, have, you eat red hot chili paper or you, you, you take red hot chili paper on the skin, you have the feeling to, to burn, enfin, to, it's because it takes the same channel. So there is a confusion in the brain between uh, the t outside temperature and this chemical reaction on the, on the skin. And so it's also interesting because it's also a question of scale. Uh, so the perception of the space is um, a perception of of um, of the temperature of the space of the atmospherical air. You are you swim in the air and you the air touch your skin and you 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 could understand what is the temperature. But you could also have the the temperature directly as a as a, as food uh, on the skin or in the mouth. And so here we propose this uh, chili. It was here. <laughs> This chili field that become a kind of uh, uh, edible, we, um, uh, e yes, edible, uh, edible, no, huh? Yes, fine. Uh, 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 um, warm solution. So it's like a radiator, but not a, a not a radiator for outside. It's a radiator directly on the body, and. Uh, 
and the other solution was the mint, a mint uh, field, uh, mint that was integrated inside the uh, inside the water, and uh, and the mint it is the same. It is a, the, it take another uh, channel, uh, the TRPM8, and so it activate the, when you have a candy of mint in the in the mouth, you have this feeling to be fresh. And it's a real feeling because it really activates the same part in the brain than the temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. So you have this freshness that are, so are uh, and so it, it's interesting because we, it's a new uh, discovery. We, it's only since five, ten years that uh, we discover all these different channels in the, in the skin and in the brain. And, uh, but of course we know in the, in the Arabic countries they drink mint tea and also it's a solution, a kind of uh, edible solution of, uh, uh, to fight the warm uh, climate. And so there is different things also, you could be in a more, uh, in a less light environment but you eat more carrot and so it gives you, uh, uh, you could see more in the darkness with, if you eat uh, carotene. And another element, it is uh, melatonin. It's a, a really important element in my work because I begin to, to I will show this project after. But uh, the melatonin is also uh, something interesting because it creates a biological link with a very traditional element of architecture, um, the light, because uh, we, um, the light is, is very traditional in architecture, the way to, to the, the, the work on the light. and. Uh, and, and uh, in uh, 1980, uh, an American sci uh, scientist called Alfred Lewy finds that uh, there is some, yeah, we will see after, so there is some cycle in the body of melatonin and different hormones that are se secreted during uh, darkness or during uh, day. And there is some circadian cycle. Each day it changes, each of them during the day and the night. And there is also some months uh, um, cycle for the woman, for example. And, uh, and there is some, also some life cycle with the puberty and the death. And so we, we, and we think today that all these cycles are related with this variation of melatonin. It could be a kind of uh, hormone of uh, biological clock in the body. And something is interesting in this, uh, in this experiment of uh, Alfred Lewy, it is during the night we have a lot of secretion of melatonin. And what he did from 1 a.m. during 2 a.m., you see that there is a lot of melatonin. And he turned on the light, so this is the darkness. And he turned on the light, a bright light, and you could see that the, the level of melatonin in the blood fall down and it turns off the light and it goes up. So it means that there is a relation between this biological clock uh, uh, hormone and, uh, and, uh, and this very traditional element of architecture. And uh, I was invited in, uh, in uh, Eidhoven in 2000, 2005 with Alfred Lewy, another person from this uh, um, circadian uh, research. And, um, and at this moment, some Canadian researcher from I don't remember from where, they, they work on the, they try to understand what, what is the wavelengths that block the secretion of melatonin. And uh, because we know that if it is a white light, it blocks the secretion of melatonin, but they want to try to understand if it is more in the blue, more in the red, more in the, in the violet, or, or where it is that it really uh, blocks the melatonin. And uh, so they find that upper than uh, 950 nanometer, uh, it, uh, you have no more reaction on the, on the, on the melatonin. So it means that uh, uh, if you, you have a very bright yellow light, it is for the body like uh, the night uh, uh, situation. And so, and, and the opposite, it is in the blue that it blocks the melatonin. So here, this blue light becomes like a sun uh, reproduction for the cycle of melatonin in the body. So, 
so everything, yes, uh, in in the so in this uh, in this project, it's uh, the idea it is a little to yes to try to decompose the. Uh, something that is usually one thing and in different elements and to try to to go in the very deep uh, deepness of each element and to rebuild them uh, in another way. Uh, here it, it is a project I, I made uh, in, uh, in France, it's called Winter Beach and uh, it was a, in a very huge a building. It was uh, rebuilt by uh, Finn Geipel he, he, uh, in, in France, and uh, and so uh, what I, I want to introduce it is to introduce the idea of the sea, uh, but not as a narrative idea, but as a physiological idea, and uh, and so I take two elements of the sea, to the main element of the sea, the main element it is the ultraviolet and the iodine uh, of the, and, the, and in the history it's very important this idea of iodine because um, in Switzerland for example there is no sea and the, the lack of iodine uh, in, the, in, the, in the food creates some disease and uh, we say in France in, in Switzerland there is a crétin des Alpes the crazy people from the mountain and it, 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 it was because they, they don't drink, they don't have iodine in the body, and so they have some disease, some big uh, guatre, it was some, and, uh, and it was a lack of uh, iodine, and uh, because iodine is in the sea, uh, and not, uh, and, and in Switzerland there is no iodine. And, uh, and the iodine, with the discovery of the iodine uh, effect on the craziness, is, is, is from the 1810, uh, something between 18, uh, at the beginning of the 19th century to the 1850. And, and so it is why this discovery, it is why it's, uh, we, we rediscover re the idea to go to the sea and, uh, and the invention of the tourism to go to the sea and uh, all these new cities that are built uh, in the 19th century near the sea was related with this uh, elf idea that you, you go to the sea because before in the Middle Ages the sea was dangerous and you don't go to the air and so it changed completely the way to think about the, the world. And in Switzerland also it was interesting because the idea to have some iodine in also there is some source of uh, water in the mountain that contain a little iodine and it was also the invention of the thermalism. Uh, all the new city in the mountain was related also because you, you could drink this uh, iodine. And, uh, and so it, it's changed completely, it's invent new city, it, it changed the way to think about uh, urbanism and the way to to, to do um, uh, where you will build a new new city related with these uh, chemical uh, uh, things and the ultraviolet of course it is the same uh, relation than to to the synthesis of the vitamin D so uh, these two elements for me are maybe it's a, the idea uh, form and function follow climate maybe it's also form and function follow chemical substance sometimes so it means that uh, um, that these two elements uh, reinvent the way to think about uh, the city. And here, I, 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 so I decompose also the idea of the sea, and uh, the and uh, and um, and I rebuilt the sea, but with only with these two elements. So it was a kind of uh, of um, horizon of ultraviolet there and uh, of pure ultraviolet and in the fridge there is a lot of uh, iodine bottle of, uh, of coming from Switzerland so it was on the, on the, on the sea because it was made in Saint Nazaire it's on the sea in France but uh, I bring a bottle of iodine uh, of water with iodine from, from Switzerland there and so it was also this shift of this, this rebuild of the sea but uh, uh, only on, this, on these two elements. 
and it was a success, a popular success. It was during uh, two uh, in the January and February, and a, a lot of people came during this uh, two or three months there, uh, really to to live there and to to spend time because it was free and uh, and uh, and so it was uh, yes. Uh, here yeah, it's a new project for uh, the Kunstwerke in, in Berlin, not Berkin, Berlin, and uh, and so it was a. Uh, um, so the, the idea, if they, they want, I, I don't know what's happened now, but uh, Suzanne Pfeiffer, the directrice the, uh, of the Kunstwerke, want to do a, a cinema with a Cinematheque, Deutsche Cinematheque, and uh, so they ask to us to, to do a project, and uh, we begin to, to, to think about uh, the phenomena of the cinema as an ecological uh, cycle, um, um, and not only as a cultural uh, cycle, or not only a cultural way, but also a, a physiological uh, way, and uh, also really, uh, and uh, also an ecological way, because we know that a beamer, uh, a traditional beamer, uh, it's very strong. You lose a lot of energy uh, of light by uh, projecting the light on the on the screen, and. Uh, so this is a first element, and the second element it is when you stay like this uh, without moving, you burn some food inside, the, some calorie inside the body, because you need to keep the 37 degrees Celsius in, inside, and you burn uh, for in one hour you burn 60 kilo calorie, so with doing nothing, and um, so if you look to a movie, it is like. Uh, 120 kilocalorie that you lose simply by by being on the on the seat, and it is what you get if you just eat a yogurt. It's uh, this one 20 uh, 120 uh, 20 kilocalorie, and so we create a kind of a relation between the the beamer, the screen, and uh, and the yogurt. And, uh, and the body. And it, it's, the project is called uh, Fermented Movie. And uh, this is a cycle so of the heat. We take the fresh air from outside because it's also related with, uh, it's more common in my work, in my more traditional work. This is also the, the way to, to understand the root of the air, of the new air, and the, uh, and the exhaust air, and the, and the thing like this. And so here we take the fresh air, and this fresh air goes here, and it's warmed by the beamer. It's, and also there is also there is two parts of the of the warm. One part it is uh, it warms the air near the projector, and also there is a direct radiation from the beamer. But uh, the most important, it is the lack, and the, no, the loss of heat near here. So we use it, and we introduce. This is uh, the room. This is a screen. This is a, a kind of a yogurt space, and uh, and it go out here. And so the the the, the white screen become become. Uh, uh, full of milk inside, and uh, so this milk receives the heat from the beamer and uh, on it, and so there is a fermented phenomena. And uh, and when the film is finished, we take off the uh, heat and we uh, we produce yogurt with this, and so so it's a kind of cycle of uh, of of the. Um, of the heat that go to the and the, the the loss of the body by sitting there and you you eat again by the yogurt. And for me, it was also interesting. There is also this part because he, this is a, a, an image of uh, l'année dernière of Marianne Bad of Alain, Ro, Alain René with Alain Robrier. And I like also the idea that you see the movie, but you could also maybe eat the movie after. <laughs> So it's a, another relation to, to, the, to, to something that it is not only something abstract and something without matter, but it's also go into the body and into you. Uh, 
It was my, my proposal for uh, the Venice Biennale in 2008 um, with Ante. Uh, he did uh, one of the most beautiful artwork there. And, um, and so the, the, the project uh, here is related to the uh, to the heat, to the question of the heat and the, and the metabolism activity uh, in, in an idea to reduce the energy to fight the global warming uh, because uh, today it's become very important to reduce the energy to, to, uh, uh, that you, you, you use to warm the space and, uh, um, and so there is some new rules related to this. In Switzerland, for example, this, there is some new recommendation. They say that because you have to warm the toilet or the corridor at 15 degrees Celsius because in the corridor you just pass through and you don't spend a lot of time so you don't have the time to become cold uh, uh, if it is only 15. You don't feel 15 and uh, if you spend only uh, uh, one minute. And in the bedroom, it could be at 16 degrees Celsius because uh, you are inside the bed and protected by the blanket. And in the kitchen, it could be 18 degrees Celsius because you move, you create your own energy by moving the body. And uh, in the living room, it could be 20 degrees Celsius because you sit uh, motionless in the sofa. And if, it, if you warm on, at 16 degrees Celsius, after 10 minutes, you become to be cold. So it's better to have 20. But you are still, you have some clothes on you, so it's 20. And the bathroom is 22 because you are naked and um, motionless in the, and so if it is only 18, so you become cold. And so this is, um, uh, this is some new uh, rules for architecture. And of course, if you think about really about, as an architect, if you think about this element, it will kill the modern plan of Le Corbusier or Miss van der Rohe because you need to separate each room in one box with a specific temperature and you could no more have open plan or open space and because if you open the door, it's, cr it's mixed the temperature. So it be, uh, when, when you, you, so you will, if it is 20 and, and 16, so it will be 18 everywhere. And so you become cold in the bathroom, so you turn on. The, so you will warm uh, every, uh, all the house at uh, 19, 20, and so you will lose a lot of energy. So you need to close the door, and so I think it's not a good solution today. So I'm, I, I want to be critical with this kind of data because uh, I think it's, uh, it's a kind of new determinism and new functionalism. And so, but also, as a citizen, it's really important that that if every bedroom are warm only at 16 degrees Celsius, you, you economize a, fl a lot of oil, and of course it's, more, it's really important. So how to do something with this new data uh, without going back to a kind of uh, uh, typology of a small box uh, as small room. So this is the first element, and the second, the second uh, element, it is uh, Archimed Law, that shows that the warm air go up and the cold air go down. It's uh, because the, light, the warm air is lighter. And very often, if you measure in this room, for example, you measure the temperature there, it could be uh, 30 or 35 degrees Celsius. I remember at the A school when uh, Zahadid uh, made a lecture, uh, we measure at different points of the space uh, the temperature, and so it was 37 uh, under the ceiling and, uh, and, and 25 there, so because all the heat go up, and so we lose a lot of energy because we don't need this 37 uh, 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 under the ceiling because nobody lives there, and so it's a, it's a, 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 a big loss of uh, energy. And so you could see this, uh, this uh, curve. It shows that the, the radiator, the normal situation, this is this situation. So it means that it's cold, it's more cold down, and it's, uh, under the ceiling it's more warm. There it could be uh, 30 and uh, 16 there. And the ideal curve, it is the opposite curve. So it means that what we want, it is anti-natural, it's uh, the opposite of what uh, the nature uh, produces because we want more warm on the foot because we have less blood in the foot so it's uh, the first uh, part of the body that we, you feel the coldness and 
so we want more warm there and under the, the sailing so we don't live there so it could be minus 10 degrees Celsius we don't care about this so the idea it, it was to to produce a space uh, related with these two elements. So it was to introduce a kind of asymmetry, of uh, a thermal asymmetry in the space. This is a section uh, we modelize with the software. And we introduce a kind of, this is two radiator. This, one, this is a radiator at um, 26 degrees Celsius. And this is a, or 22 degrees Celsius, it could be, and this is a radiator at 16 degrees Celsius. So it's a cold radiator, of a more cold radiator and more warm radiator. And uh, when we, so if we normally, so we try to build this curve with this, uh, this element. And so it's, uh, what's happened, it is that the warm air go up there and touch the cold surface and fall down and it creates a kind of mov movement of air and, um, and, uh, and it is a little like the Gulf Stream phenomena. So the Gulf Stream is related with salt because the salt, salt water is less, is, um, is, is, uh, is more heavy than the, the, the uh, without salt water that coming from the from the ice, from the north part, and so it creates this cycle, and it gives uh, for Europe, it's a very important element for the climate. And the idea was to build a space, a section, uh, with, related with this movement of convection. And, uh, and something interesting appear. You could see that different place appear so here it's 22, here it's 16, here it will be 20, here it will be 17 and 18. So different thermal zone appear, different space appear. And, and, uh, and so the, there is, the space appear, but without walls, without sailing, and uh, uh, without, uh, uh, without solid uh, material, but just by uh, introducing a kind of uh, term, uh, thermodynamic um, tension in the uh, in the space in the section, and also we could see some shape appear related to this. So in the for the Biennale it was really simple, like these two elements. The, the, uh, this was a warm surface and a cold surface, and uh, it was made like this. And nothing, there is nothing really to see, but the quality was more inside the, the, inside the invisible. And so it become also like in the room, like a kind of summer. And uh, if we want here, it was a kind of uh, summer, and here a kind of winter. Or it could be also uh, a bathroom and a corridor. Or, so it's, it, is, it could be the 22 degree of the bathroom and uh, 16 degrees Celsius of the... So it means that the typology of one house today, because we know that uh, the, you know, the, what, is, what are the idea to, to design one house, it could be privacy or public private and, or, or things like this. But here it's uh, the main... Uh, design, main idea for the design, it is this tension between 16 degrees Celsius and 22 degrees Celsius. This is this difference of heat that generates the, uh, the, the idea of the, of the house today. And uh, on the platform we also add, you could see some chili <laughs> and also some mint candy there. And this is a different uh, t the channel a neurologic channel, so this is a TRPV1 with the ch chili and the mint there, and the comfort is there, it's another receptor. And uh, we begin a study with a company in Switzerland, to, we want to try to, to do some uh, water with, uh, that mix different temperatures, so it could be like water at 22 degrees Celsius, you, dry, you drink like this, or it could be 15, if, you, if it is more the winter or the summer, you could choose different uh, with uh, 
but we and uh, and so this was one product we we begin to do some tests also we mix the different uh, element we produce this a kind of cream and so it was a kind of uh, paradisiac uh, image of if you are a little cold you feel a little so you have a li not you don't go in a house but you just put on you a little uh, warm cr cream that stimulates this uh, uh, temperature directly in the brain without architecture and uh, this was a candy of uh, of mint so we produce this uh, so it was a mint candy that uh, give freshness if it is more uh, too too warm so Related to this, um, we, uh, a French artist, Dominique gonzalez Foster asked me to design one house. And so I take this idea uh, to, to do uh, the, the, the house. So it's, uh, we introduced with a software, uh, it was 12 meter by 6 meter high. This is a section. And we modelized different positions of the radiator inside. And of course, we follow the Swiss recommendation. So we introduce 22 degrees Celsius as the higher, the warmer, the wa warmest part of the house, at the bathroom, and the 15 or 16 degrees Celsius. It could be the bedroom uh, there. And uh, so we modelize with the software, and we find different uh, temperatures. So the 22, uh, 20 here. And following the Swiss recommendation, we introduce a function inside. So the bathroom here, uh, where, it is, uh, where it is 20, we introduce uh, the living room. At 19, the kitchen. At 17, the, uh, the bedroom. At uh, 16, the toilet. And the bathtub at 22 inside. So, so the process, the design process is reverse. So it's not, we don't begin to, to design the space and after we introduce the climate. If we first design the climate. We introduce the furniture related to the climate and after we begin to link the furniture with the floor that follows the curve of the temperature and uh, and so it gives one uh, image of uh, of uh, um, uh, we use all the atmosphere uh, uh, of the house with different uh, area of temperature and of course we need to keep empty uh, all everywhere to let the air moving through uh, the, all the current all the the air movement must go everywhere and so here it's it will be more about 20 degrees celsius and here 22 degrees celsius and here uh, uh, so it's uh, um, it follows uh, the section and the, the movement of the heat and so it's also a solution uh, uh, I, I said before that uh, these new rules uh, kill the open space, so it's uh, an idea to reintroduce the open space uh, because you, you don't need doors, you don't need to, uh, to separate the different temperature because the temperature separate by themselves uh, related with uh, the movement of convection and, uh, and heat and uh, heat that go up and, and cold air that go down. So it's, uh, it, you could keep uh, the, mo the one of the most important uh, um, invention of the modernity, this uh, open space. Uh, so, so the exhibition there is related to the domestic astronomy, is related to, to this too. And this is another project in, on the same ID. Uh, for a, a, a housing building uh, in Germany. And also, we, we try in a more traditional way to introduce this idea. So this is a plan with a more uh, warm area related also with a section. And, uh, and this, is a more, this is the most cold area and the uh, in-between area. With this is a, the, it becomes space for more the the bedroom, but it's it's still an open plan, and uh, you could wander a little in this different climate, and you could uh, go in the more cold area, and this is a plan, the section, 
and uh, and so the shape of uh, we also use it for, um, we take the air at different uh, when it is a winter we will take the air more here and more here in the summer and so the section is related with this different eye and so we we have one image of this so uh, with a different thermal zone thermal position thermal eye in the in the interior Okay, this is um, another project on the, uh, about melatonin, and uh, it was at, in the um, at the end of the 90. Uh, at this moment in architecture, uh, the, the computer arrive and uh, become very important, uh, and and uh, internet and all the and all this uh, electronic device and uh, also the, it changed uh, the way to, to design architecture with uh, the Blob and the Greg Lean and, and uh, all these uh, uh, new way, new new tools for designing architecture. And, um, and also there is a lot of fantasm about this, about the dematerialization of architecture uh, and uh, with a computer, with a screen. And here we, we, we want to reintroduce to, to keep the only because at this time the idea is that the every everything could become uh, uh, dematerial uh, well, like second life a little was already there but this idea to, to that the, the computer you could live on the computer and uh, and uh, the only link uh, uh, between the body and the computer is the ray the radiation of the screen on the eye and of course, it was related with this. Uh, uh, we know that we need a lot of light during the day to block the melatonin, and no light during the, the uh, a lot. There is no light during the day, the, during the night, and uh, during the day, uh, a lot of light, and and so it creates this cycle. It synchronizes the hormonal cycle of melatonin and different different hormone to the cycle of day and night and the variation of light. Uh, and so uh, in, in the dematerialized uh, world of internet, we, we would like to say, we want at this moment to say that we could not, uh, the, the movement of day and night must stay in, on the internet. We could not say that we don't need any more the astronomical cycle because the body is related, is linked to this cycle of day and light. And so we, we reintroduce a kind of, uh, of uh, cycle. It's, uh, on the, it was a, a software that create a kind of uh, yes, um, cycle of day and night, but it was not a, a, a cycle of 24 hours. It was a cycle of 25 hours because uh, it, it seems that the body has an interior cycle of melatonin and uh, of 25 hours, and uh, it's think it's not far from the 24-hour cycle of uh, of the day and the night of the astronomical cycle, and so it's why human human cycle is adapt to the astronomical cycle. But we could imagine that in the history of humanity. Uh, we could have a, a, a cycle of more uh, short of uh, 12 hours or, or 16 hours and so uh, related with the astronomical cycle it was not synchronized and so it creates some disease and so now uh, this 24 hours interior cycle of uh, melatonin is synchronized to the cycle of the day and of the, uh, of the rotation of the earth and uh, and so it's why it's done together and it's a phenomenon of the jet lag it is because you change of uh, uh, you go to, to you change your own cycle of melatonin and you and uh, and uh, you change from uh, you keep your own cycle of melatonin and you change uh, as you call cycle and so you are no more synchronized and so you need it's why you you have this pro problem of uh, of sleepness because we we see there that we feel when we have less melatonin in the body, 
uh, when when we have uh, when there is more light, we feel more alert. When the, uh, and also, it's related we, when we have less melatonin, we feel more alert than when we have a lot of melatonin. So, so for this uh, in internet weather, we introduce a kind of cycle related to two wavelengths: one that block the melatonin. It was this very bright uh, green that block with the wavelengths block the melatonin and the purple red uh, let melatonin secretion so it was still light but in a, it create a, a kind of uh, um, weather and also a, a kind of uh, uh, clock on the internet and uh, and so in this idea in 2001 we made this melatonin room in uh, in San Francisco and uh, so we produced two rooms, and the idea was also to to escape a little from the from the narrativity or the, the idea that you could create space, but without a function, but just with a kind of physiological quality. So it was two rooms: one with a very bright uh, green light. It was this this uh, space. And, uh, and so it's, it was like a day, uh, like a, uh, also it's melatonin is also related maybe with sexuality, and so it was a space where you, you are more alert. And in the other room, it was um, a space where the light don't affect the melatonin secretion, so it was a, a more uh, maybe more close to a bedroom or so, something like this. So also the electromagnetic waves uh, introduce the possibility of function there, but without saying that it is a bedroom or that it is another function. But it's still open to uh, some interpretation. And here also the main idea was to to uh, show that uh, a space could have uh, also uh, could have a relation to a normal approach of the body and so it's not only uh, um, a social approach it's also a, a normal approach and so in 2002 we were invited for the biennale for the swiss pavilion and so it was a work on the uh, on different levels. The first level was a pure experiment of uh, the body. You go inside this room, it was a very bright light and you lost completely the limit of the space. And uh, so people uh, have the feeling to float inside and you, you were looking to the angle of the space and you don't see them anymore. And, uh, and the second uh, the second uh, interpretation of the space was like a shift of the high mountain to the sea level, because we take two elements also of the high mountain. We, we take the, 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 this reverberation of the light on the snow that, come, that, that touch the, the snow and go to, to you directly. And uh, because you have no the protection of, uh, of the eye, you don't, uh, with the snow you receive directly the light in the, in the, in the eye. So you have this very bright uh, feeling. And so, because we introduce a very a lot of uh, fluorescent tube that reproduce the daylight, and uh, it, it go to 10,000 lux, so it was uh, very very bright. And also, we reduce the level of oxygen inside the space from 21 percent to 14 percent. So uh, it was also when you go in the height mountain, the, the oxygen uh, level fall down because uh, related with the pressure. And, um, and so the bright light, of course, blocks. Uh, this is the third level the third of interpretation. It was this hormonarium or this uh, uh, physiological uh, uh, perception. It was, of course, that the bright light blocks the melatonin, as I showed before, and the reduction of the of the 
oxygen also stimulate one other hormone called erythropoietin, the EPO we know from the sport player that dopes themselves with this, uh, with this um, uh, hormone. And because there is a lack of oxygen, the bodies have a secretion of uh, this EPO that produce a lot of red cells that multiply the red cell and bring the oxygen to the different organ of the body. And we could see there the augmentation the increase of the level of EPO inside the, uh, this is at, at um, an altitude of 3,000 meters, so the level go up. And there is also some disease, some reaction of the brain. Uh, this is uh, someone who writes at the sea level here, and when you go higher in the, in, in the mountain, you have a lack of oxygen and you have also some, so this erythropoietin reaction, but you have also some different neurotransmitter reaction of the brain. And uh, you could see that uh, when you are on the Everest, you begin to, to feel, to hurt strange things and to, to become also crazy with this, uh, with this uh, because you have a lot of reaction of, uh, of serotonin and other neurotransmitter that uh, uh, changes the body. But we, don't, we were not so high, we stay here. So it was not so dangerous in the, in the, uh, in the hormonarium. And uh, so, so it was a space, and also the, the, the idea of this space was to, to show that architecture is not only something outside the body, and it's on, uh, you don't perceive the, the, the space only with the five senses, but you also perceive the, 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 the space also go beyond the skin and beyond uh, the eye, and go directly to the hormonal uh, level, and so you react to them. And, uh, and so it shows that uh, architecture, the, the, the traditional uh, separation between inorganic and organic, or biology and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and, and, and inorganic, uh, are blur. And, uh, and also what it is visible and invisible are blur. And the contemporary space is something that, of course, we see things, but there is a lot of other things that we breathe and we receive on the skin and uh, some uh, radiation and some different things that already exist. So I'm not the inventor of, uh, of the erythropoietin, melatonin, or all this wave, So because sometimes people don't, uh, I, I just understand that today the contemporary uh, world is like this, and so we, we of course, we, uh, it's, it's a reality of the space today. And so the, in the visible, there is nothing really to see, but it was more, uh, yes, inside, the, inside uh, at the hormonal level that it changed. For the change of the, it's a very quick. For the melatonin, it's uh, in a few minutes, and uh, for, for the erythropoietin, it was maybe one hour to it begin already to increase in the body, and uh, and so it was a very interesting project because we, we there is a, a huge, very important uh, security uh, and research to, to to because we we work we take the, the air from outside and we decompose the air from outside from the nitrogen and the oxygen and we recompose with another composition by adding more nitrogen. The nitrogen is a neutral gas and, uh, and so we, we keep, uh, we have three levels of security to analyze and to keep them. And also we, are, we asked to a French musician uh, Air, uh, maybe you know this band, to, to do the music uh, in the bench there and there. And so there is, they compose a music in the sub, sub, uh, with subwoofer, and so it was like more like a music for the skeleton. You know, it was not really to earth, but vibration, and, uh, and so it was all woofer inside, the, inside this bed. And so uh, in the following of this, uh, I was invited for the Micro Museum uh, in Zurich, and so I discover when I, I uh, uh, this relation uh, between the altitude and this brain disease uh, reaction of the neurotransmitter when you have a lack of oxygen, and something is really interesting because. Uh, 
the idea of, uh, you, you could understand that the death, the moment when you die, is the same, is, it is the same physiological uh, um, moment if then if you go in the altitude. Because when you die, the, the, the air stops to, to push some oxygen in the, in the brain, and so you begin to have a lack of, of oxygen in the brain, in the eye and everywhere. And so it, if it, it is like if you go more in the altitude. So, uh, so it begins to, to uh, you begin to have, to, to have a, at the beginning you have 21 percent in the brain of oxygen and after you have 18, 19, 17, say 15. So it's like an instant travel in the altitude and the idea may be of, um, of this uh, idea, when you die, you go to the sky, is a metaphor, but it's also a physiological reality. You really go to the sky because you have uh, this lack of oxygen in the body. And something really interesting too, it is that uh, when the, the, there is this uh, near-death experience, and the near-death experience, uh, the people say that they see a tu dark tunnel and light, and, uh, and they, they heard some strange music, some chim chiming music. And uh, it is the same description than the alpinists, when they have a lack of oxygen on the Everest, they also heard the same music, and they also have a lack of... Uh, 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 so the mystical, the, the God experiment, uh, uh, this feeling to, to, to meet God uh, in this experiment is related to this lack of oxygen. And so we propose there to do a room, but nobody could really go inside, where we only propose uh, seven percent of oxygen. So it's, it was a near-death space uh, <laughs> where, where maybe you could meet God. <laughs> But it's not sure that you, you are still alive when you go back. No. Okay. Um, an, another project, on, it was um, uh, from 2001. For, um, also about uh, perception of space related with this idea of placebo. And uh, I don't know how many times I, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so here it's, um, um, we, we produce, we, we, there is something very interesting also in, the, in this um, neurologic uh, uh, um, uh, per perception uh, and uh, of the, uh, it is that, uh, is there is this idea of placebo, and um, the placebo it is when you have something that there is no chemi chemistry inside, but uh, in reality it could work really because the body could prov could uh, uh, secrete their own uh, chemistry. So because we have endo substance in the body, so endo uh, tr uh, uh, endo like endo chemistry, and uh, you could really be. Uh, cure, enfin, you could uh, be uh, saved by some production of placebo. And, uh, and so it's, it's, um, it's not uh, esoteric, it's really like the, the, we know that uh, you, you, with a kind of own stimulation you could uh, be, you, you, because it's like you know, it's like, maybe to give an example more simple, it is uh, if you are a man and you like women and you see some, an image that could excite you, uh, of, uh, or you see a beautiful woman, so you have some secretion of uh, neurotransmitter and you become uh, exciting, excited. And so it is the same because there is no, um, there is no chemistry that comes to you, it's just your own stimulation that change your uh, body uh, attitude and body... Uh, and uh, so this, it could be the same. It is the same with um, with the placebo. It's, you could provoke your own med, uh, chemistry in the brain, uh, and and the and, um, doctor knows this. And uh, it's why in France there is a lot of discussion because the, the public want want no, uh, want no more to pay back uh, this placebo med, um, uh, chemistry. But uh, it's too complicated. Okay. <laughs> So uh, here we, uh, we, we produce two placebo paint and uh, we pro propose to, to take big uh, pot of big uh, 
um, uh, of uh, paint, and we just introduce in one uh, one drop of uh, ginseng in one, and uh, one drop of uh, blossom of orange blossom in the other, and so there is no smell. There is no really. It's like a more like homeopathic. Uh, uh, so it, it was just a drop inside, and we inside two rooms we paint everything with this. Uh, 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 color with this paint, it was br uh, white, but uh, the, bl the orange blossom, have, we say that it is maybe it could be cool, uh, it, 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 uh, it's a calm uh, um, uh, smell, I find it calm when you, you, you drink some uh, bl uh, orange blossom, and uh, ginseng have sexual, uh, it could be like a, a sexual um, uh, power. So these two rooms was exactly the same, but one was more like a sexual room and the other was more like a, a calm room. And, uh, and it was uh, very interesting because some people smelled something and uh, so their own imagination provoked uh, different. And also it was interesting because uh, we work also with a, a specialist of the placebo in France. Uh, and, uh, and, and so for me, it was interesting because it it worked really. It's, it was a, it, it, of course there is nothing, but it is uh, scientifically it it worked because uh, this placebo have a real uh, effect. Um, yeah, I just want to show something about humidity, um, and uh, we we need to. To, um, to change the air, uh, related also to the fact that when we breathe, uh, we, uh, it's, it's not 45 degrees, it's 45 percent. When we, uh, when, when we are in a room like this, maybe there is 45 percent of relative humidity in the space. And when we take it on the, on the lungs, it, and we breathe, we have a lot of water that go in the air, and so it, we, we breathe a lot of, uh, so it becomes like 90% of relative humidity. And it is the reason why we have to renew the air, the, why we have air uh, ventilation. It's not re really that we, of course, we burn the oxygen and we produce CO2, but it's also the problem of the most important problem of the ventilation. It is uh, the production of your own, our own production of humidity of vapor, and uh, this vapor need to uh, if because if we don't change here the ventil the air in this room, so it become more and more wet, and uh, and at one, at one moment there is some uh, condensation, and so it creates some mushroom and some uh, 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 some because it's uh, the, the related with the temperature. The air could keep only a certain percent, uh, per, a certain quantity of relative hum of, of vapor, and after a certain line, it changes into a liquid. And uh, so, um, so today, uh, because we we uh, before it was the bad construction uh, create some small hole, some uh, everywhere, and so uh, between the. Uh, a window and a wall, there is some air that go, come into the house, and so there is a, a natural a kind of um, ventilation uh, like this. And today, because we need to have a perfect insulation, perfect proof envelope of the building, we need to renew the air in a very precise way by using this uh, soft double flow air renewal. And maybe you know this uh, uh, system, it is to take the the new air from outside, it go in the house and it it's go out and before going out, uh, um, it uh, gives the, the heat to the so it's uh, to the air that go, come inside. So now it's in Switzerland, we use this is a, uh, the, because it, it, with this solution and with a big insulation, you could reduce a lot the heat the energy you use for heating the the building. So it means this is a, a situation before. And now, with this new new insulation and with a, with this double flow, you could reduce by a factor of eight the quantity of energy that you use in the building. And uh, and so uh, and the quantity of air is related also of uh, that you have to renew is related with the activity of the of the body in the house. 
So if you sleep, you produce only 40 grams of vapor. If you are just uh, like this, you produce 150. And if you use the kitchen, you produce a lot. And uh, so it, it, this element is, is interesting because it changes the typology of the house. Because the typology now is like this. It's no more day and night or private public, but it becomes from dry to the wet because there is a kind of invisible route of the air that must travel the, the entire house by coming first in the bedroom and because it's the most dry area of the house and go to the living room and after go to the kitchen or to the bathroom or to the toilet. And so there is one uh, way of the air inside the house and uh, of course, the, it's, uh, if you have smell inside, you could understand, uh, uh, because if the air go from here, you have the odor of the toilet that go in the air. So you need a pressure there and a low pressure there to have this uh, movement of... Uh, and, and, uh, and so this is a new technique, because uh, we know that if we... Uh, we could introduce in the house only a certain quantity of air related with the number of people that live in the house and the activity of the people. And so, of course, it's a way to reduce a lot of energy by, uh, by introducing not uh, uh, the, the exact quantity of air that we need. And, and, uh, and so, it's interesting because it changed the typology and so here, for example, we begin to we start, we do some different projects about this um, by, uh, by introducing, by, to, uh, and we compose the house uh, related with, uh, uh, is this is a, the, the new air that come here and we have all the bedrooms there. And so we, we analyze the route of the, of the moisture of the vapor in the house that go to the kitchen and to the, uh, the, to the bathroom and the toilet there. And so it composes a new landscape, a new domestic landscape uh, related with, uh, uh, with, um, with the air movement in the house. And for me it's interesting because it changed the typology of the end and I, I just, uh, in this moment, there is an exhibition uh, I made in Stuttgart. It's called Meteorological Typology. And it is the idea to rethink the typology of different uh, functions related with uh, these new techniques related with the climate. And so, for example, this uh, spa, this, uh, uh, on the, uh, this uh, competition we win in France. So this is, uh, uh, the, the, this is the root of the air. That, that go from the most dry area to the most wet area. And so we first design like a, like a river of air. And, uh, and uh, so it, it, it is, uh, we, we first design the, the, this kind of river of, uh, of air in the, uh, that creates the shape of the building. And after we introduce the function inside, so here it will be the more dry area, so it becomes a sauna here, and the hammam there, and also here it's uh, the, uh, the shower. So it's, uh, every, every space becomes related to, to this root of, uh, of air inside the, the building. And uh, just uh, next week there is an opening at the Pratt Gallery in New York, and uh, I saw this uh, terroir deterioré. This is a double flux exchanger. Uh, we produce, and uh, this is like a domestic uh, element you could uh, bring in your own apartment. And here, it was also an idea to to think, uh, rethink about the postmodernism or rethink about the idea of localism. By because in France, for example, you during the 80s uh, there is a lot of buildings that were built with stone. But the stone, it was too expensive to have a real wall in stone, so it was a very small element of stone. And uh, when you uh, knock on it, it was like uh, empty, you know. So it's, uh, and also there is the, the element to fix, to hang this um, pan of, um, of uh, stone was not good, and some stone fall down, and so it's a really uh, bad, uh, bad moment for French architecture. But it, the idea was to, 
to give an idea of French localism with it used by the limestone typical of Paris uh, as an ambience for the, for the building. And, uh, and here the idea it is to, uh, to take this uh, element but to, you, to introduce them as a chemistry, as a, not, not as a visual element of uh, limestone, but uh, like um, more um, more physiological element, and that could give a taste, maybe a smell to the air, or a small uh, element, maybe not so. And so, for this, we 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 analyze the different uh, uh, element of the ground of Paris, the different limestone related to the wind. So we could imagine that uh, this is a typical. Uh, landscape, uh, typical uh, geological uh, map of Paris, and we decompose the quantity of uh, of the different stone, and we recompose it inside, like a, like a kind of, uh, like, uh, and it was a knitting system inside the house related to this, and we made the same with the wood, by the different uh, kind of wood in Paris, and uh, it's recomposed with different. Uh, uh, wood and so it gives also a kind of taste uh, of the of the air and also the wood is here also to absorb the humidity uh, because it's a kind of uh, when it's too wet it gives back the humidity and so here when it's too dry uh, when it's too wet it absorbs the humidity and when it's too wet it uh, gives it back. Okay, uh, I have a maybe I will finish with. Uh, a la uh, a last, a last uh, project also re it's very simple now uh, related to to the melatonin and to uh, so we 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 know that this is a curve that show the where in, in which wavelengths from the violet to the uh, to the um, red. Uh, so it shows where the, 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 the what is the wavelength that blocks the melatonin, and so it means that he, uh, uh, so after 550, so in the yellow and uh, orange and red, so it's uh, for the body it is like uh, the night. So it means that uh, there, you could receive a lot of yellow light on the eye. For the body, you could uh, it doesn't change your melatonin cycle. So it's a uh, it's create. Uh, so here the project was to create a kind of, of reverse noctambulism because the idea was to uh, the modernity create a kind of perpetual day uh, uh, during the 19th century uh, by introducing the street lighting and. Uh, and so it was a revolution because uh, and Heidegger, Martin Heidegger, for example, says that uh, the modern technique want to create the day during the night or want to create the summer during the winter and he was against this idea. He, say, he, he thinks that we have to keep the cycle of the season and the cycle of day and night and the modernity, the really uh, fundamental idea of the modernity, it is to to create perversion, to pervert the, the cycle of day and night and season and to create perpetual day and perpetual summer everywhere. And, uh, and so uh, the idea was to be critical with this situation today and uh, the idea was how to reintroduce the night in this perpetual day of the modernity. And so the project here was to create a kind of second perversion to, to um, to, 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 to create, like, like modernity create a fake day during the night, during the natural night, and here it is to create a fake night during the fake day during the natural day. And, and, uh, and so it's, uh, it was this very bright uh, yellow light that is perceived, that it looked like a day, but it's received by the body, like a, physiologically, like a night. And, uh, and in the space we introduce also some music and it was a, we reverse the nocturne of, uh, for the piano because uh, it's interesting the nocturne for the piano it was invented by uh, John Field we know from Frédéric Chopin but uh, the, fir the first uh, musician that invented this uh, 
kind of uh, work for the piano was an Irish musician, John Field, and he invented this, uh, uh, this nocturne for the piano uh, in 1815. Uh, uh, so it was three years after that London first introduced the street lighting in the city. So at the same moment, there is this perversion, this idea to create a kind of perpetual day, and John Field creates this idea to to, to, with the nocturne to, re, to produce a kind of, uh, uh, of atmosphere of, for the piano uh, that evoke the night you could play during the day. And the last project, it is this uh, split time cafe related with uh, melatonin. It's the idea that today architecture, we understand that architecture is not only create space, but it, it also create time. And, um, and here we create three, it's like uh, we split the time in three uh, different time. Uh, and it's, it is like here a kind of perpetual night and here a perpetual day and here it could change with a natural cycle of day and night. Uh, there. And, uh, and after we we integrate also the furniture related to this, so it's uh, in this perpetual night it could become like a lounge uh, space, and here it's more like a bar, and uh, and so the, you you could really uh, change, choose where you want to be, and uh, it's like an instant travel or like a Star Trek travel. Of you could shift in in. Uh, uh, you open the door and you are in the night and you open and you, you, you find yourself in the day. And uh, so it is a reality of the space today. So we, we really understand today that architecture, yes, it, the space is not only uh, something abstract, something inorganic, something uh, uh, just measurement and just uh, something solid, but it's, uh, there is a lot of link with the atmosphere and uh, with the climate, and with the weather, and with the physiology, and with the time, and uh, with the body, and with the health, and so it's, uh, it was a uh, project. Okay, thank you. You were saying that our human bodies have a, their own natural rhythm that is somewhat synchronized with day and night change. So are you saying we could adapt biologically to instant time travel in a spaces like this that stimulate and simulate different types of the day, day condition, day and night? Yeah. In, in the, the so, so, something very important for me it is that uh, you, we, we are not um, um, we are we when when the night is coming we don't sleep immediately so we are free to decide to go out uh, in a club or to do what we want so uh, so this freedom is still in this project so it's not a, uh, when you receive some blue light, of, of course it's block your melatonin, but you have the human is free of uh, to decide to sleep or not. You know, it's uh, not uh, uh, it's not so strong. If I, of course it's strong, but if I, it's important, but it's not so uh, so. So in, in a few minutes you could measure that you have a more when if it is the, the night and you go in the very bright light. Uh, you, you could measure uh, the melatonin go up in a few minutes. You could measure uh, no, it, it, the melatonin fall down. It was uh, in a few minutes, but it it, it means that it gives you you a, a better uh, position for sleeping, maybe. But you you are not uh, forced to sleep, and and of course for me it's uh, important to as an architect to 
keep this freedom. Enfin, yeah, I don't, I'm against the idea to manipulate people or to do. I, I, I think we must be informed, and here it is a, we are free to go where we want. We, but here it's not so. But here, to the idea was this space was a natural space uh, that changed with the day and night. And here it's an artificial uh, night, and here it's an artificial day. But you are free to go where you want, and uh, it's like you are free to drink a glass of wine or not. And uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's um, yeah, of course, it's really uh, work, but, but uh, you, you are still free to do what you want. Well, thank you, first for the lecture. I actually saw the. 2002 pavilion in, in Venice, and it was like shockingly original. I remember, like the, I was astonished by the, the the originality of the work and the thinking. But actually, I never, until today, I never thought that there was a, an element of uh, irony in the work. But after this lecture, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Can, can you? Can you tell me, yeah. <laughs> or maybe by definition, this is something that you cannot answer? But is there a, is there an ironic element that I had always missed? Or? I think it's maybe because also I focus on on a kind of project, right. and so it's uh, it's also uh, it's also uh, by, yeah I, I could do another lecture without irony and uh, with more so it's uh, also the, the kind of project but of course uh, I, I I not um, you know I, I, I of course I think we are not in the modern uh, time of uh, of science and uh, so it's uh, uh, it's why in this element I don't believe that I don't uh, believe in a, that uh, that science and technology will uh, change uh, need uh, uh, we need to change people I, I, I always think that it could create a new background change the background but I, I, I want that be uh, the, the so so. So and also maybe the irony you could see in the ND cult, for example, the near death uh, space and things like this. And uh, but it's always real. So it's a, it, there is a, an irony, but it's always real. It's never uh, um, a fiction. So it, for me, it, it is a really important that it's, uh, there is not this uh, idea of fiction. So it's uh, it's always real. And uh, and uh, but it's also. The irony, it's also a moment, sometimes we don't know, if I, when I work, I, I, I don't know if it is possible to do it or not. And I know, for example, some project of 2002 it was very strange at this moment and become very more normal today. Oh, and also, I, uh, with because, uh, peop, uh, the society change and the people change, and so, uh, yeah. So, so it's more the work is more allegorical than ironic. Is more allegorical than ironic. Uh, no, it's not allegoric because in the way that it's it, it it's sort of displaced in time and it's telling certain stories. It's it's it's, t it's telling certain stories, but in, engaged with a kind of real condition now. Yes, it it tried to 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 see how how the new element could change the way to think about traditional element and uh, and. Uh, uh, yes, and so it changed uh, things, and and, uh, uh, and there is this uh, ironic come from this, but it is not my goal. But, yeah, but uh, of course, uh, yeah. I was wondering about some of the the programmatic applications of the of the projects you've done, because it looks like a lot of them privilege uh, domesticity and uh, in interior spaces, and some of them seem to require a lot of waiting time. So I'm wondering if things like lobbies and atrium spaces aren't uh, right programmatic um, implications for it. And then also uh, thinking about um, applications about where you might replicate a climate or replicate um, or simulate in some ways states of day or states of night. Um, and I mean this, mean this with all seriousness, but it seems like interplanetary travel or places that are sort of off Earth or, um, and, and yet I don't know if that's maybe leading into the sort of irony, but um, underwater. Uh, underwater or any, any spaces which tend to uh, limit um, uh, 
these kind of cycles that you're perceiving or that you're, that you're suggesting are already present. And I mean that, again, with all series, not, not saying that. I, I think uh, why um, is there is this possibility, but I, there, there is two reasons for this. Uh, the first reason, it, it, it is a question, uh, the question of the insulation. Because in Switzerland, for example, now, before it was uh, 10 centimeter insulation, uh, now it's, uh, it's 16, the normal, but uh, it's also it could be 14 centimeters of insulation. So it means that inside the, sp the, the space, it becomes completely um, disconnected from the outside. And it is the most ecological way to do a building today. It is to disconnect it completely because after you could uh, light your lighter and you could warm the room only with a small quantity of energy. So it means that uh, it, it, um, it gives the question what is the climate you will have in this uh, in, in entire space. So it's, the, the idea to reproduce a climate is not uh, the goal, it's not uh, an invention, but it's become a consequence a little from the sustainability because we need to to, uh, uh, to, to, to control completely. And, the, and this is a, it's why in, in the, the reason why we begin, we, uh, we made a, a project, um, it, was, uh, it was a reproduction of uh, the climate of Tahiti in France, but um, uh, of, the, of yes, uh, Tahiti, you know, uh, Tahiti, yeah. and, uh, and so the reason of this project, it could be strange, but in reality it was what was already made by the modernity. Because when you go in the house during the night, there is artificial light, so it's like the day in Tahiti. And in the winter, it's warm, it's like the summer in Tahiti, and it is in the winter in France. So in reality, in, in every house, there is already a kind of Tahitian uh, climate inside. So, but we just show it. We just show here. I don't. If you could, we could analyze the light. It could be like a, a sunrise, a sunset, uh, maybe in Hawaii. Uh, so in November, I don't. So here, there is a reproduction of uh, Hawaii. Uh, so, so it's already made by the modernity. So and and just uh, in my work, it is just the idea to 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 be aware of about this and to begin to to design if I to. To, uh, and, and the other reason, it is also, it's maybe a more catastrophic reason, it is that the idea with the global ma warming that the n natural climate don't exist anymore because we, we could say that before we warm only inside the house with the, with the heating uh, system and, uh, and uh, so inside it was an artificial climate and outside it was natural and, uh, and today with a, we warm also outside the house uh, because uh, we are of one degree or two degree. So it means that there is no more natural and artificial. So everything is uh, is artificial. And so uh, in, in Manifesta 7, for example, I propose to rebuild the natural climate in Italy in, uh, if the global warming never exists. So it's a, it means that if you want to create something natural today, uh, you have to do it artificially. So it's a, yeah. So it's a, it's why this question came. Yes. Uh, I just uh, a comment. I mean, I, the, part of the pleasure. I mean, going back to the question of irony. Uh, I mean, I don't. Want, I'm afraid of insisting too much on it, but I'll still say. I mean, there's something. It seems completely compatible to me that the thing would be real, as you say, and ironic. I mean, in some ways, it is. Uh, it is that. It is the, um, in a sense, the insistence upon the achievement of certain technical ends, you know, through temperature control or the association of light with uh, effect. Um, that lends it this, I mean, increases the irony. So, and, and, and then the fact that, that in, this, in this particular house, that, you know, it's distilled into these sort of essential signs, yellow for daylight, blue, blue for darkness. There's something, you know, there, it's like a kind of perversity in the elementalism of the uh, semiotic of it. And that somehow even the literal elements like temperature yeah. are uh, treated to my mind almost as if they were semiotic devices. Mm. No, I mean. Yeah, the, uh, I think it, it's also um, something related to 
to, uh, to maybe modernity, if you think about music or uh, literature, about Alain Robriet, uh, the nouveau roman or the music, at one moment you you begin to to analyze uh, in another way the element and you recompose something. So maybe. Uh, you know, uh, the first roman of Anna Robbriet could be also ironic because it's, uh, you know, he describes uh, this bottle on the table is at uh, 30 centimeters from the side and uh, so you don't understand, it's look, uh, but in reality it's because he changed um, way to, to, to think about how to explain, how to write something and, and so yeah, 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 yes, maybe it's also this change of paradigm or of, of uh, and um, that creates this something uh, a little strange and uh, yes. All of the projects that you showed us in your talk today uh, were largely about external elements and their impact on the body or through the body via the skin. And so there's a real element of control in the projects that you presented. And I'm wondering if you've given any consideration to uh, proprioceptive experience or proprioceptive sensory experience and how that might interact with the kind of sensory experiences you're projecting onto the body from the exterior. Um, so, so you mean oh, oh, to, to create sensation? Uh, oh. Well, it seems to me that once you insert the body into your projects, all of the sensory experiences are coming from the outside. You're controlling those experiences, but there's another level of sensory experience that is generated from inside the body. Yes, this proprioceptive yeah. set of experiences, and I'm cu just curious to know whether yeah. any kind of intersection be between those sorts of experiences play a role in your project, or what happens to the nature of your project, which depends largely on the external, when you have the intersection with the internal, which is out of your control. Uh, I, I, I think that there is, there, there is bon, I don't know if it is the answer, but there is things that come from the inside, for example with a red hot chili pepper or things like this, enfin, the idea to eat something that changes sensation from the body. And also in, the, in the, some recent project we, uh, now, we also work on the, for example, on the more uh, exterior uh, with the wind, with the light, to, to also use them for, um, to design, so, uh, so I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ah, no, uh, not, re no, not really because we, we know already, uh, we know. Yes, okay, no, I understand. Outside yeah. of no, of I, yes, for me, I don't believe, I think that uh, we, have, we, we, we still are free. We, have, uh, we are not, uh, we, when we receive some blue light, uh, we, we don't sleep uh, in one second, you know. So it it's means that we, we, uh, we are, uh, it's, uh, all this element is, is become like a background but it's not uh, changing everything. It's a, it's a background where, so it changed uh, the, the way to think about the, the design of architecture. But uh, of course, people are not, uh, all the people will not react in the same way to, to what's happened. Uh, so, so, so it you means that uh, it's just changed the background, but not uh, completely the, the, the body. So it means that. Uh, Yes, you, you, are, you are still free to, to, but to have an interpretation of this. But actually this is what, by, which makes his project architectural, because he is mediating, intervening 
on the mediation between the external and the internal, and that's why it's architecture. Yes, yes. Mm. Otherwise, it's something else, right? So, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, and you, and for me, it's always important that because it's it's important that there is no mis misunderstanding. It it is also important that uh, here I focus on 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 special project, but in in uh, I I always want that the user. Uh, stay free to to uh, to have an interpretation. So, yeah. so yeah, I don't want to manipulate to give one order to 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 the body. I want to change the the the, the frame and uh, the where you are, but not uh, n not the, the freedom of the people to be free to to. Uh, and so it's why yes, for me, architecture is not. Uh, I don't want to create function, but I want to create. Uh, landscape where you could interpret the function, or you, you, and so it's uh, important to to be free. And it's why, for example, the, the climatic element, um, the, these new rules to have uh, the bathroom at 22 and the living room at 20. If you just follow this, uh, you create a kind of functionalism, new functionalism. And so I want to escape from this. So, so it's, uh, I don't want to follow this. I want that people are more free than before. So it's, uh, what, what about people Well, okay. Um, despite the light, the night has come. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we all need to be free to appropriate the reception outside. Uh, uh,